Hello everyone. Today I am going to present our paper Deep Learning Based Vulnerability Detections. Are we there yet? This is a research work from Columbia University, New York. In this paper, we investigated current deep learning based vulnerability detection techniques and their limitations in detecting real world vulnerabilities. We systematically identified, categorized, and studied the limitations and proposed some intuitive solutions. The goal of this paper is to shed light on the insufficiencies of current techniques. Before moving on to the detail of the presentations, let us quickly revisit source code vulnerability. Source code vulnerabilities are flaws in source code that could create potential risk compromising the security of the software, which could eventually allow hackers to take advantage of such code by attacking the endpoint to potentially steal data, temper code, erase memory, and so on. For instance, this is a vulnerable code. Because of this sprinter functions write to a buffer of unknown length, it could overwrite other important or safety critical content in the memory. Now, the question is, why are we interested in detecting vulnerabilities in the source code? The more the world is becoming reliant on high-tech softwares, the more our safety, security, and privacy are becoming dependent on the secure source code. This is a snapshot of vulnerabilities reported to National Vulnerability Database, NVD. In October 2021 alone, around 1,700 CVEs are reported and processed by NVD. Majority of the CVEs in NVD database are critical or high severity flaw. Most of these vulnerabilities are detected, identified, and reported in post-deployment phase. That is when the software is reached to the end user. It is very important for us to build tool that can identify vulnerabilities before the software reach the end user. That is in the pre-deployment phase, ideally during the coding phase. Since the relative cost of fixing a flaw in coding phase is much less than that of in production or post deployment phase. Nevertheless, to detect vulnerabilities during coding phase, most suitable approach is static anal analysis based approach, where an analyzer takes in the code and any other structural, syntactic, semantic, or functional metadata available and predicts whether the code is vulnerable or not. These approaches do not assume the presence of any test cases and often considers all possible paths in the control and data flow graph of the code. A deep learning based vulnerability detector implements such an analyzer using a deep neural network. Such a network is trained on large collection of annotated vulnerability data and formulates the problem of vulnerability detection as a code classification task. A typical pipeline on deep learning based vulnerability detection involves 
curating and pre-processing the data from different databases, designing and building suitable models, training the model, and finally evaluating the model on detecting real world vulnerabilities. With that spirit, we evaluated the existing vulnerability detection techniques in two real world vulnerability datasets. Among these two datasets, we collected reveal data from the issue trackers of Chromium and Debian projects. And here is the results of these existing techniques in these two different datasets. Evidently, the performance of these approaches in these two datasets are far from being effectively and reliably used in development pipeline. We have identified two major source of problems to explain these results. And in the rest of the talk, we are going to discuss these problems. First, let us discuss the issues with existing dataset. A vulnerability detection tool intended to identify real world vulnerability must be trained on real world vulnerable code. A lot of the existing techniques are trained on synthetic or semi-synthetic vulnerable codes, where the vulnerability is often isolated from the rest of the code. For instance, this code is a buffer overflow vulnerability. Here, the vulnerable code is isolated and there is nothing else but the vulnerability code related to the vulnerability in this examples. In real world, source code are not as isolated as this one we can see here. Thus, it is unrealistic to find such an isolated code in real world and the real world code are much more complex than this. For instance, in this code, the code, code contains a lot of other things than the vulnerability itself. In addition, the vulnerability pattern in this code is much more obscure and complex. Thus, we conjecture that the training data should be real world source code. That is, any deep learning model aimed at identifying vulnerabilities in real world project should be trained on source code examples that resembles the real world source code. Furthermore, vulnerability or vulnerable functions in a project is not so common. A typical snapshot of a project contains hundreds of files with some functions in each file. Very few of those functions are usually vulnerable. Thus, in a real world development settings, the proportion of vulnerable and non-vulnerable code becomes very imbalanced. We emphasize that to realistically understanding the usability of any tool, the tool must be evaluated in real world imbalanced settings. With this conjecture, we categorize existing datasets into two different categories. In one axis, we are showing the realistic nature of the code. In another axis, we are showing the source of the annotations. To be realistically used in real world vulnerability detections, we propose using uh, real world datasets where the source code comes from the real world projects and the annotation is, comes from the developers. Thus, the lesson we learned while analyzing the characteristics of existing datasets are deep learning tools for real world vulnerability detections should learn from real world data. 
tool trains on isolated vulnerable code may not only detect isolated vulnerabilities, which is often impractical. To be practical, real world vulnerabilities should be annotated by real human being. Tools built on automated annotators may only learn the annotator's algorithm. And finally, the evaluation data should closely resemble the real world settings of the developers. Every tool and techniques should be evaluated on highly imbalanced datasets. With all this lesson learned, we designed a prototype of data collection for vulnerability detection. First, we go to the issue tracker of projects. Then we identify the issues with explicitly tagged as security flaw or vulnerability or any other security specific tags. We also make sure that the issue is resolved and there is a patch attached to the issue. For every file change in that patch, we identified the functions that are changed. We annotate all the functions that are unchanged as non-vulnerable. For the function that are changed, we annotate the version before the patch as vulnerable and the version after the patch as non-vulnerable. In that way, we collected a dataset containing more than 18,000 functions, among which there are 1,658 functions that are annotated as vulnerable. Now let us move on to the next part, where we investigate the existing model and identify the issues with existing models. First, let us see an example. Here is a function which, as we have seen earlier in the talk, is a vulnerable function. We used Russell et al's CNN-based model to classify these functions. And the model indeed classified this function as vulnerable. However, when we poked the model a little bit in depth and added some explainability to the model, we see that model that the red portion of the code are the responsible for the vulnerability. We conjectured that even when the model is doing the right thing, it is doing it for a wrong reason, which shows the model is picking up wrong signal from the data and thus is not usable in detecting real world vulnerabilities. In fact, if we look closely, we see that a lot of existing models are treats code as a sequence of tokens. We hypothesize that using a sequence-based models lacks the capacity to analyze different structural informations that has traditionally played a very important role in detecting vulnerabilities. So, the lesson we learned while investigating different models are token sequence based models may not be the best choice for modeling source code. The model should have the capacity to incorporate information about different dependencies and flows in the code, either explicitly or implicitly. Token names that is the variables and the APIs should not be abstracted or hidden from the model since those often contain valuable information for vulnerability analysis. With these lessons, we design Reveal, a graph-based vulnerability detection tool. Given the training data containing vulnerable and non-vulnerable code, we first struck the code property graph, which is a graph that in, contains all structural relationship between code components. 
from the code property graph, we extract the initial node features for every node. Then we use a graph neural network to learn the node features from the graph structure. Once the node features are learned, we aggregate those into graph level features. Given a collection of such graph level features, we do resampling to reduce the imbalance bias and do representation learning to train our tool reveal. Here is the result of reveal on detecting vulnerabilities in our collected datasets. And as we can see from the result is that reveal outperforms all the existing techniques in terms of recall and F1 score. Here is the result of reveal on detecting vulnerabilities on divine datasets. And here we can see that reveal outperforms all the existing techniques in terms of all, all precision, recall, and F1 score. In fact, if we look closely, we can see that the graph-based models that is divine and reveal performs better than that of sequence-based models that is Valdipaker, Sysvier, and Russell et al. So finally, to summarize the main takeaway points from this paper are deep learning-based vulnerability detections is far from being perfect and even far from being effectively usable in development pipeline. To improve the deep learning based vulnerability detection technique, both training and evaluation data should be carefully chosen. The models should be carefully chosen to facilitate the code analysis. And finally, in the future, the static analysis on the functionality and dynamic analysis on execution risk should be incorporated into the model to design a robust model for detecting vulnerability in source code. Thanks for listening to the talk.